You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. I'm with my good friend here, Rob. That's right. <laughs> and you're listening to episode number 417. Thank you very much for joining us. It is a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. We're happy to be with you, and we're very, very thankful that you're with us. Albuquerque. A lot, a lot of options out there, Paul. I know you listen to podcasts. There must, there's just there's thousands tens of options. And thousands of them. And, there are. And a few of you hang out with us, and that's really cool. So thank no, you. No, it is. We do. And uh, if there's anything else you'd like to hear on here, don't be afraid to tell us. Just go to askadroni.com. Whether you have a question or a comment, you want to email us, send us some love, support at thedroneu.com, whatever you want to do. We love your opinion, and we really do enjoy making you happy. So. We do. I will say it is just based on volume, it is much more difficult for us to get to your questions when they're emailed to the support email. I I wish we could get to more of those, but it's just it's really challenging. There's just not enough time in the day. Gotcha. So maybe what we'll do is a podcast where we just have a ton of those and we just kind of go through them, boom, boom, boom. They'd probably be shorter answers. But anyway, something for us to think about. Definitely something for us to think about. So we're going to get right into today's question. But if you have a question, don't forget, askdroneu.com. Hey, guys, Dan here from Kentucky. Um, I sent you a, a message uh, earlier about uh, the Phantom 4 and uh, Jello effect. Um but uh, I was wrong on that. It's not the jello effect I'm looking for. It's the motion blur. So um, when I pan left and right, I'm getting a fairly serious uh, amount of motion blur. So I wanted to ask you what uh, we should do about that. Uh, I am um, uh, working at 30 frames per second, and I am using ND filters, and uh, I've got my settings uh, set what I think are correct as far as uh, 30 frames per second and setting my uh, my settings to 60 on my shutter. so uh, But I'm still getting a lot of motion bar, so I wanted to ask and see what you would suggest that I could do to eliminate that problem. Thank you. You know, one of the other effects that he's probably seeing when he's moving his camera left and right, Rob, is not only motion blur, but what we call rolling shutter. And mm -hmm. it's essentially when the buildings and um, if you have, you know, tall, straight, 90 degree objects, they begin to warp on the edges of the frame when moving left and right. Um, that's simply because of the way that these cameras are made. Right. Um, DJI, GoPro, so that would cover 3DR, and I believe Unique as well. They do not use global shutters. They do not use a global... S the sensor doesn't see everything all at once. It normally reads right. from left to right. Um, so when you actuate the camera quickly, you get not only the motion blur, but you also get the rolling shutter effect. So you have to be really, really, really slow when you're turning. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Now, can you reduce this effect somehow? Yeah, I think there is a good way. And I think the way that you do that is simply by... Uh, increasing the frame rate and shrinking down the resolution. How high on the frame rate are you? He's going to be about? limited. No matter what he's flying, he's going to be limited. Um, I would say if you can get two seven sixty, that's going to be your best bet. But a lot okay. of the a lot of the DJI stuff can't do that, so you're probably going to have to go down to ten eighty sixty. Okay. But you know, if you're really moving slow, um, if you're banking your turns. Uh, you're not going to notice the motion blur effect as much. You can also take the ND filter off. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have less motion blur like that because you're going to have the shutter speed jacked up really fast. Okay. Um, but it really comes down to how you manipulate the controls. You know, it, it's just like a, what we said a long time ago. Right. When I was playing lacrosse, my, uh, you know, I used to get really mad and say it was my stick. I didn't, you know, string my <laughs> stick right. I'm, you know, I couldn't throw properly today because my stick wasn't working right. And my coach said. You know, Paul, sometimes it's not always the equipment, but rather it's the operator. And I did not like hearing that. No, no, that's not an easy thing to hear for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for anything. But I, I would ask this, Paul, how much of what Dan is referring to is it's just a function of how the cameras work. And the reality is 
This is why you don't see a lot of rotating shots, by the way. Okay. It's a lot of sliding shots. But, you know, and if his if his motions are very linear, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of new pilots do this, right? They, they they get up, they fly, they go to one area, and then they rotate the bird around, they fly a, a perfect straight line mm-hmm. to another area. You know, they're not making these naturally curving, natural organic shapes and turns. Right. Um, because when you do, you know, move the butt end of the bird out while you're turning left, you're not going to get as much of this effect. Effect because okay. you're simply, you know, counteracting the, the motion of, of the bird. Sure. Um, it, it's still a very real problem. And, you know, unless you know how to do power slides in, in your DJI Inspire 1, uh, he's going to have some difficulty. But that's why it really comes down to, you know, doing like the obstacle course that we have here at DroneU, you know, in-person training. Come here, meet with me or one of the other trainers. We take you through the course and we teach you about banking turns. Because even in manned aviation, you can always tell the best pilots by how much yaw they use in their turn. You know, are they making right. these, you know, like nice swooping lines? Or are they trying to fly straight and then rotate very heavily at the last minute just to make that turn. Well, and that all makes sense. One of my questions is these effects that we're discussing here, does the average viewer of this footage are they affected by those effects? Does that make sense? So um, Again, if the pilot is actuating the bird, if he's getting yaw or rotation quickly, right. either left or right or left to right, right to left, it's going to be very dissatisfying to the audience. Okay. So it is something to be very, very aware of in terms of this trying is how, to get better and This and is how it. people measure quality in yeah. drone footage, very simply. Uh, you know, how smooth is it? You know, I've said buttery smooth. You want these nice, smooth, complex motions where you're tilting and you're panning and you're moving the bird. Um, you know, it takes practice, but this is how people measure quality. Yeah, because you want the viewer to be at ease, essentially, while they're watching the video because... A lot of what we see nowadays, it's it's sort of jarring. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you, you just kind of you start twitching <laughs> watching some of the stuff because it's constantly, whether it's the yaw kind of going like this, and I'm kind of moving my hand in little increments. Um, that is hard to watch, and so I see what you're saying. Something like the motion blur effect is a little bit more obscure, I think, but nonetheless, you're saying it has the same kind of negative effect on the viewer. Yes. Totally. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's more, it's that curse of knowledge. It's when you're watching HGTV and you see those jerky motions. That, this is exactly what we're talking about. Well, and that's my point. The curse yeah. of knowledge not everybody has because the average viewer doesn't have that, and that's I would that's s- what I'm asking. Uh, so I would say the average viewer, let's say the lower tier of the average viewer would <laughs> maybe not notice it, but anyone who works in photography, videography would notice it. Um, I'd say people who are privy to the entertainment industry would notice it. I would say people who are picky about their entertainment would notice it. Uh, and I would say anyone on YouTube and those trolls, they would notice it. Right. And then ultimately, I don't want to get too weird here, but the subconscious notices it, even for somebody who's not an experienced viewer in terms of understanding these things. If it's just uncomfortable when you're watching it, then that's going to be an issue. So... Anyway, gotcha. anyway, all right. Well, I think that does a good job of answering uh, today's question. Thank you again for sending that in. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com and upload that right away. And don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, you can watch this material question by question. If you're like, oh, I heard that question on the podcast, but I'm, I don't want to look through iTunes. You can just go to YouTube and search Ask Drone You and the question, and it'll pop up right away. And then you could subscribe and look at all the other videos too. Anyway, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.